Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course. This module is on direct access. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to look at the requirements from our configuring mobile computing section of the exam. It's going to focus on direct access, and we're going to look at configuring client-side configurations for direct access, configuring the authentication processes for direct access, and also what your network infrastructure requirements might be if you're planning to deploy direct access in your environment. Direct access is one of the new features that comes with Windows 7. It is very similar to VPN technology, except with traditional VPNs, you as an end user decide when you're going to bring up and use that encrypted tunnel and when you're not going to use it. Direct access takes this to the next level. It is always on. If you're in your home office, then it's going to have an encrypted tunnel back to your corporate office. If you go to your corporate office and sit down and it's inside your corporate building, direct access automatically knows that you're in a local building and it doesn't have to set up a VPN connection. You then go to a coffee shop, it's going to set up direct access VPN, and you never have to type anything in. You don't enable it, you don't disable it. You as the end user see a completely seamless method of communicating back and forth. This is something that's included in Windows 7 Ultimate and Windows 7 Enterprise. That's what we need for that seamless authentication. This is not a technology that's available in Windows 7 Professional and lower. This is something that is also using IPv6 to do its primary communication path back to the corporate office. There is something that Microsoft introduced called the Microsoft Forefront Unified Access Gateway that takes some of these IPv6 requirements away. But if you're just using direct access with out that Microsoft UAG, then you're going to want to make sure that you have a way to communicate via IPv6. And a lot of what we're going to do in this video is talk about how you would configure the setup for direct access and use those IPv6 requirements. This is also something that needs Windows Server 2008 R2. That's a pretty specific configuration. In fact, we go a little bit further than that with specifics. It needs to be in a Windows domain for this to be able to work properly. And it has to have at least two network interface cards associated with it. One of those network interface cards is on the inside in your corporate network. The other one is on the outside on the internet side. And for that connection that's on the outside, we need two consecutive IP addresses associated with that single network interface card. That's a very, very specific hardware configuration, but it's what's required to have this direct access work properly. There's also an extensive use of digital certificates. We want to be sure these machines that are connecting back to our office are set up to authenticate properly and use these digital certificates to be able to do that because it is an encrypted link. So our digital technologies that we're going to use, our encryption and the certificates in place are going to be very, very important to make sure to have direct access work properly. Let's look at the process that takes place whenever we connect a computer to the network and try to communicate back to our central office using direct access. This is our laptop machine. This may be at an off-site location, a coffee shop in our home office. There's a wide area network or a WAN connection coming through here. There's also, this could be an internet connection coming in, but it's somewhere that's not at our corporate site. In the middle of the picture is our Windows Server 2008 R2. And behind that Windows Server is our corporate network where we have other computers, servers, and devices that we may need access to. The first thing that happens is your computer makes the connection to the network and tries to determine if it's on the corporate network. And it does that by performing a DNS lookup to a machine that's only located inside your corporate network. If you're outside the network, there would be no way to know that that machine exists. And if, what it does is ask other devices and look around and what IP address am I? Where's the other device that I'm looking for? Where's that server that would help me understand if I'm on the corporate network? And if it looks around, checks the DNS server and sees I'm not on the corporate network, then it tries to make some connections back to the corporate network over a link and says, can I connect to that corporate network over IPv6? And it tries to perform that function. That also checks to see, because in most cases, you're not going to have a pure IPv6 connection site to site if, it, if you're in a coffee shop, for instance. So it tries to connect with some tunneling technologies, it tries to connect with 6 to 4, tries to connect using Torito. If you need more information on those, we did a previous video that talked about that IPv6 communication. 
So it's going to use a couple of different processes to see if it can communicate back to this Windows Server 2008 R2. The last thing that it does, if it can't do any of those things, is use this IPv6, IPv6 communication that it's going to encapsulate within IPv4 that is then going to be sent via an encrypted HTTP connection. So it's using that IPv6 inside of HTTPS, and that's called IP-HTTPS. One of those is going to work. Almost always that HTTPS as being a last chance is a very good chance because it's running over 443. It's using standard HTTPS protocols. It's things that most of the internet connected links understand. And once it is able to connect using one of those methods, it sets up this IPsec tunnel. That IPsec stands for IP security. And it's a very standardized way to communicate securely between different devices over the network. We then perform a check. Is this user authorized to be able to communicate via direct access? We want to be sure that whoever is connecting in is somebody allowed to be on our network. And if they are, then they now have access. Direct access is set up, and they have access to our corporate uh, environment. And they can use printers and file servers and database servers and applications just as if they were sitting at our corporate office. For direct access to be configured properly on the client, you have to add the client to a specific group that is determined during the setup of direct access on the Windows Server 2008 computer. So you're going to add them to that security group, and there will be a group policy object created that you can then use to set different parameters for the deployment of direct access and the use of direct access. There's a lot of encryption involved here. There's encryption going back and authenticating to your Windows Server 2008 R2. So you have to make sure that the client machine does have a certificate that's going to be used properly and authenticate properly with that direct access server. That's a very important part of that, especially when you're communicating to that server across the network, that everybody trusts everybody else in being able to perform that particular setup process. You're going to see when you finally connect with an end user and look at their network configuration, the client's going to see a message that says, currently connected to internet and corporate access. And that's going to tell them direct access is working properly, and I've connected through that tunnel. We talk a lot about certificates on the client computer and using them. We used them in the last video with BitLocker. We were talking about using certificates here. There's a lot of different kinds of certificates that are on your computer. We're talking about adding some others. But I thought it'd be useful to know where to manage those. You would manage them through the Microsoft Management Console. To start that, you can simply type in MMC from your Start menu. That'll bring up your Management Console. And then you can load a snap-in that's called Certificates. And then you can look at the certificates for your local computer. If you drill down into your local computer and look under Personal and Certificates, what you're looking for when dealing with direct access is a certificate that's set up for client authentication and server authentication. There's not a lot of configuration you have to do for the client because once you add them to the direct access group, it's going to use whatever policies are there. But you may want to make some configuration changes at the command line. And the configuration changes available to you are associated with how the end station is able to check for and use those IPv6 technologies. So we're going to use NetSH. We've used that in the past, so we're going to use it again. And the NetSH interface commands would be related to IPv6, where we're setting Torito Enterprise Client and an IP address that would be used by the Enterprise Client, referring to direct access. The NetSH interface 6 to 4, where we would set the IP address of the relay server. Remember, with 6 to 4, we need that relay server there. And NetSH interface HTTPS tunnel add an interface and point directly to where the server is located to build that IP-HTTPS tunnel. And you would change and put the server name in right here, and it would know where to go to build that tunnel. To look at the configuration, which again may have been configured at the command line or by our group policy, we can look at NetSH interface 6 to 4 to show relay, show Torito. We can also do an HTTPS tunnel and show interfaces. So whether we're configuring at the command line Line, or simply looking to see if we're enabled properly, we can do all of that using NetSH. Let's review some questions from this module. Our first question, what Windows 7 editions support direct access? Remember, not all editions of Windows 7 will work properly with direct access. We need Windows 7 Ultimate and Windows 7 Enterprise. Our next question, what's required on the network to support direct access? 
Well, it's quite a bit, actually. We're going to need server 2008 R2. We need two network interfaces. The internet link needs to have two consecutive IP addresses. And we need some trusted certificates for authentication and encryption to that server across the internet or the wide area network link. Our next question, which utility can help you troubleshoot any certificate issues on the client computer? If there's anything dealing with certs on a client computer and you want one place to go to, you can use the Microsoft Management Console, MMC, with the snap-in for certificates. That covers the requirements we needed for this module on configuring mobile computing, specifically on direct access. We looked at configuring the client-side configuration, configuring the authentication on the client and the server, and we've looked at what our network infrastructure requirements are to be able to support direct access. If you'd like to watch any of our absolutely free Microsoft videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards and much more, you can visit our website at ProfessorMesser.com.